So sometimes when you're dealing with reacting mass calculations, they can be a bit more tricky when you have this principle of something called the limiting reactant. So generally when you're doing a reacting mass calculation, you will have one reactant with a mass, uh, and you assume the other reactant is in excess. You'll work out the moles of that reactant, look at your molar ratio to work out the moles of product, and then convert that moles of product back into a mass to get your final answer. Now in these limiting reagent or limiting reactant questions, you're going to find you're given two masses and two different reactants to deal with. And you start off ex exactly as you would by working out the moles of those reactants. But then you're actually tasked with, with working out for yourself which, which of the um, reactants is limiting and which of the reactants is in excess. In other words, for inputting in layman's terms, which one's going to be exhausted and run out and which one will not. So I'm going to take you through the process step by step of how you go about dealing with those sorts of calculations. So step one is working out moles of the reactants. So you can do that because you have masses and you know the identity of the particular reactants involved. So I'm going to first of all work out the moles of aluminium. So moles is equal to mass divided by relative mass. In this case, it's AR, the relative atomic mass, because we're dealing with elemental aluminium. So 100 grams from the question divided by 27, the relative, relative atomic mass of aluminium gives me 3.704 moles of aluminium. Next, I'm going to work out the moles of the chromium-3 oxide. So that is uh, N of Cr2O3. Moles equals mass divided by RFM this time, because we're dealing with a compound, not an element. So 400 grams divided by 152. 152 was uh, calculated by timesing the relative mass of chromium by 2. That's 52 times 2, plus 3 times the oxygen's relative atomic mass, which is uh, 16. So 3 times 16 gives me 152. So 400 grams divided by 152 gives me 2.632 moles of chromium. At this point I should really consider the molar ratio because it's going to be important for what comes next. So the molar ratio in the, in the balanced equation is two moles of aluminium reacts with one mole of chromium oxide predictably every time we do this reaction. So the molar ratio is two to one for aluminium to chromium. What that means is, thinking about this mathematically, what it should mean is every time Every time we do this reaction, two moles of aluminium should react exactly with one mole of chromium oxide every time the reaction takes place. That's important for what comes now. We're going to consider what is the limiting reactant and what, uh, which of the reactants is therefore in excess, more than enough. So here's the, here's the equation again, and I've actually listed down here the two moles, uh, amount, the amounts of moles I had from the previous calculation. So 3.704 for the aluminium and 2.632 for the chromium. Okay, let's consider what this really means and what the molar ratio tells us. I can work out how many moles of chromium 3.704 moles of aluminium really should react with because it's a 2 to 1 ratio. Okay, so that's half the size of this number of moles. So 3.704 moles of aluminium should really react with 3.704 divided by 2, half that number, about 1.852 moles of chromium three oxide. That's how much that, that's how many moles of chromium three oxide is required to completely react with this amount of aluminium using my ratio to help me do that. Now interestingly, this number is bigger than that. This number of moles present in the actual amounts I've been given is more than the theoretical amount of chromium required to completely react with all the aluminium present. Therefore, this reactant is in excess. There's so much of it, there's more than required for the reaction to go to completion in terms of how much aluminium I've got. So some of it doesn't get used, it doesn't get used at all, it gets left over. So there's more than enough chromium oxide present, it is in excess. Therefore, by process of elimination, the aluminium must be the limiting reactant. It all gets used up in the reaction and it's, uh, there's no excess, whereas there is leftover chromium three oxide. I can actually work out how much is left over, but also how much is used, because if I know uh, yeah, this reacts exactly with 1.852 moles of chromium 3 oxide, that means that only 1.852 moles of chromium 3 oxide actually gets uh, involved in the reaction and it is actually reacted at all. This is important because now I can use these two numbers to work out 
my uh, moles and also my mass of product because these are the ones which are dictating what's actually happening in the reaction and all that excess chromium oxide isn't doing anything at all. So if I go to step, the last step, you can see there's two ways I can solve this, this problem, both of them involving using molar ratios and the amounts of moles I now know are reacting from the previous um, section. So I know that the aluminium was limiting and all of it gets used up, so I'm going to take the number again, 3.704 moles of aluminium, and I look at the ratio of aluminium to product, which in this case is chromium. It's a 2 to 2 ratio. Therefore, simplifying that, it's a 1 to 1 ratio of moles for aluminium reacting to form chromium. Therefore, the moles of chromium product I can form is also 3.704 moles. I can work out the mass of 3.704 moles of chromium by timesing by its relative atomic mass, which is 52 from the periodic table, telling me that I should form, theoretically, 192.61 grams of chromium in this reaction. What would happen if I actually used the other reactant instead of the aluminium to do this? Okay, so I'm going to talk about the chromium 3 oxide. Well, I know that from my excess and limiting that not all of the chromium 3 oxide is, is actually going to react. Some is left behind, some is left over, not and isn't used at all. Only 1.852 moles of chromium 3 oxide actually gets to react with that amount of aluminium. So that's the amount I bring forward into my final step the 1.852 moles of chromium thioxide that actually reacted. Now it's a 1 to 2 ratio of chromium thioxide to chromium. Okay, so I've written that here. So to work out how many moles of chromium I should form, it's uh, 1.852 times 2 to follow the molar ratio. And look at that. It's telling me I've got 3.704 moles. Exactly the same as the other method. And it should be, because that's how the mole works. It's a quantity to help us do these sorts of calculations. So the mass of chromium is 3.704 times the relative atomic mass of chromium, which is 52, giving me 192.61. So it didn't matter which of the two um, values I used, either this one or this one, they both give me the same answer because um, the, 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 the model ratios are creating that predictable pattern, if you like. So that is a reasonably simple um, limiting reagent and excess reagent uh, practice question.